We posted a poll on our YouTube channel community page with the question, do you trust film distributors? The poll received over 8,000 votes. 85% of those polled said they do not trust film distributors. How do you feel about the negative reputation surrounding distributors? So I, I'm going to be a little contrarian on this one. Um, I think there are bad predatory distributors out there. And I think there was a time when there was a lot more of them. But so I'm not saying that bad distributors don't exist. They're not out there or there's not even a lot of them. There, maybe there's a lot of them. But I, I think that 80, I would say 80% of the negative chatter around filmmakers and distributors stems from filmmakers misunderstanding of how distribution actually works and what the market will bear for their movie. Like I, I've seen filmmaker after filmmaker saying, this distributor ripped me off. They're lying to me. I know my movie made more than this. And nine times out of 10, it didn't. You know, like it, it didn't like they're like a movie. Your movie is not entitled to make money in the market. You know, like it, some of them don't. You could have, you know, like Death Day, for example, like it's it's not the best movie in the world, but it is it, it's competent. It has all of the like sellable elements. It's all in focus. You know, it's it you know, it's it it, it should have done better, but it didn't. And, and it wasn't like the distributor hiding numbers from me or anything is like, it just didn't do well. And I think a lot of times it's easier for us to point the finger and say it's their fault or they're lying or they cheated than the movie just didn't do well, you know? And I think that's what happens a lot of the time. And then the other thing is, you know, it's, it's just in contracts. And, you know, a distributor is a business. They're looking to make money. So the first contract they give you, it's going to be boilerplate or it's going to be, you know, uh, skewed to favor them. You know, I have never, I haven't worked with one distributor, well, maybe one, that wouldn't negotiate a contract. So like if, if you don't do your due diligence and don't realize that, hey, I made a $50,000 movie and a $30,000 sales cap is crazy. If, if you don't know that and you sign a $30,000 sales cap, it's kind of like, you know, I'm not saying it's all your fault, but you, you didn't, you signed a bad deal. You know, like you had the contract, you know, you should know that 30,000 on 50 is a, like, that's a bad deal. It's a red flag, you know, or, you know, was these companies that are running around now trying to, trying to like have filmmakers sign 25 year contracts. Like that's, that's ridiculous in this day and age, you know? So like you should, if, and if you don't know that you need to educate yourself. So like if you're going to go out and look for a distributor and, you know, know the points on the contract, educate yourself, you know, like there are. And the thing that makes me mad is like today there's no shortage of information out there about these distributors, you know, and the ones that are bad, that are really predatory, like you can, you can find it pretty quick. I mean, you can Google predatory distributor and, and these names will pop up, you know, like avoid them. It's so I, I, you know, there are situations like the stripper where like that was like straight up that no fault of the filmmakers like that happened. That was a horrible, like bad situation, you know, and there are distributors out there that are doing like really shady crap. And, you know, and again, and no fault of the filmmaker, but I would say more often than not, a lot of the negative things around them is, is it's just it's just not understanding distribution. And these boilerplate contracts, how many pages are they? I mean, they could be anywhere from, you know, I, I've seen some that are single pages, um, but I've seen others that are, you know, 10 or 12 pages. They are, and, and they're long, you know, and like, and I don't understand all the ins and outs of contracts, but, you know, I go to other producers that are more experienced if I'm dealing with a new distributor and I'll give it to them. Or, you know, and I know a lot of people are like, well, I can't afford a lawyer, but you know, you can, you can get a lawyer to look at a, a, an entertainment attorney to look at a contract for a few hundred dollars, you know, and I, and I know that sounds, you know, whatever, maybe that's, uh, you know, like an entitled, like, Hey, a few hundred dollars, it's nothing. But if you're looking at making money on your movie, you have to, you have to take some of these safeguards. So if you don't know the distributor and don't have a relationship with them or don't know anybody that does, 
get out there and find somebody that does. Like it's really easy to track down other producers now. You can go on 9DB Pro, look up a distributor, click on 10 or 12 of the movies that they've distributed and start contacting producers. You know, and you know, some of them won't want to talk to you. Some of them will bullshit you, but you talk to enough, you can get a lay of the land and then have a lawyer look at the contract or somebody that you trust that has more experience than you and go from there. And when you did take a contract or contracts to an attorney, were there certain things that were eye opening to you where you kind of thought, oh, yeah, this sounds fine. It's legalese for something, but I'm sure it's fine. And then they pointed out, "Ooh, this is actually a red flag. Um, not not really. I, I mean, for me, I, I've I've been fairly lucky with with two exceptions uh, with distributors um, and most of the things that I got back was just like kind of just what I mentioned before. Like uh, one of them was like, this is too long a license term. Like they wanted 10 years and they're like, you know, you should get this down to no more than seven, probably five, you know, and, or they would say that their sales cap on this is $25,000. Uh, your movie was budgeted at 42. That's half of your budget. Like, that's probably more than what, and, and and honestly, if you're talking about lower end distributors, anybody that's trying to charge any more than 15,000, to me, that's a red flag. Like, I, cause I, I, you see it over and over. They, they, there's no way they're putting in, you know, uh, $30,000 into promotion of those movies. You know, they make a one sheet, maybe a trailer, you know, every now and then some of these distributors will really get behind like a single movie and they might spend that, but I think most of the time they do not. So I just don't, I, unless my movie was starting to get it over the hundred thousand dollar range, I wouldn't even consider a distributor with a, with a sales cap over 15. Why do we often hear that filmmakers are not making money with their distributors? However, we often hear the other side from people who work in the business that you can make great money in distribution. So I think some of it is, you know, grass is greener on the other side stuff. I think some of it is just like not true. Like I, I've talked to, you know, like I've talked to several, you know, dis distribution company owners over the past, you know, three or four years, like doing my channel and whatnot. And you know, they have, they have to present a sunny front. You know, like th things are good, you know, the movies are making money, but you know, when you actually get into the nitty gritty and look at the numbers overall, generally the, like they're not. So, you know, I, so I, th I think some of it is from that. And I think, and I think also, you know, usually there's so many different levels of movies. And I think some of the some of the filmmakers aren't necessarily like at the same level that some of the distributors are that are that are making more money. So like say you hear uh, I'm just going to name a distributor off the top of my head. Somebody like uh, like Gravitas Ventures is saying like we had a great year with, you know, and and, and maybe they did. But, you know, they they're representing you know, over 2000 titles. So maybe they had luck with a certain type of movie and maybe your movie is not that type of movie. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, I think it is such an individualized thing, film distribution, and it's so based on an individualized film. Like, you know, I, I've just sat here and talked for three hours about generalities, right? But it's all specific to the film and to the filmmaker. So, you know, like a company could be doing great overall, but your individual film might totally flop with them. And, and then, and the other thing with that, you know, people you hear this all the time, filmmakers talk about, uh, you know, distributors like, oh, if I was with this distributor instead of that one, the movie would have done so much better. It, it wouldn't, you know, they're, they're all going to the same places. They're all getting to the same platforms. They're all doing the same basic amount of marketing or no marketing. You know, it's like, it's all the same. You know, like people ask me all the time, like, you know, what are you, cause I do indie rights and film hub a lot. Wh which do you prefer? Which is better? I mean, I've had, I've had movies make more with one movies make more with the other. It just, it, de it just depends on the movie, you know, and the, and that movie, you know, there's no way to tell for sure, but I, I'd make a thousand dollar bet 
that I want to believe would have made just about the same amount of money with Film Hub as it did with Indie Rights. Or, you know, something that did really well with Film Hub, like Alien Contact T, might have, might have done the exact same thing with Indie, probably would have done the exact same thing with Indie Rights. In general, the movie's going to make the same. It's going to get in the same places. There's some distributors that have you know, like a few better connections, you know, maybe with this platform or that platform, maybe they'll get a slightly better deal or maybe this, maybe this company has a good relationship with Shudder and you're doing horror movies and maybe they, maybe they're good to go for, for that. But generally speaking, they're all getting to the same place. They're all making the same amount of money. So it comes down to who do you trust, who is transparent, who is going to pay you and who's going to pay you on time and who's not going to, you know, screw you over. And, you know, in my experience, you know, distributors like Indie Rights or distribution platforms like Film Hub, they are trustworthy, they're straight up, they're transparent. You know, to me, it's a no brainer. You know, like I, I, there are distributors out there that people would say like, well, you know, maybe, maybe your film would do better if you went to like vision films and, and maybe it would, but I, but I would say that the amount that I'm paying on sales fees and the extra stuff that they charge to do those extra things might not be worth the more money you're making. Would you say if someone can't afford an attorney that maybe distribution is not for them because they could end up hurting themselves severely? Mm. That's, 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 that's a good, that's a good point. Um, I, I would, yeah, I, I, that's something to consider, but but again, I, you know, I, I've signed I've signed a few contracts without ever going to an attorney, but like just talking to other producers or you know doing the IMDb thing and contacting other producers, and, and at the end of the day, you know, everything's a risk. Like it's 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 all a risk. Self distribution is a risk. Distribution is a risk. You know, doing it yourself, going it with them. It, it, like there's never a, you know, a sure thing. And there's never a, you, you just, you never know. At, at a certain point, like filmmaking, it's it's a trust fall. You know, at a certain point, you either jump in or or get out, you know. So, you know, like I, like I wouldn't go to a new distributor with craving, you know, like I wouldn't do it. You know, like uh, there's too much on the line for it. And yeah, sure, maybe I would have, you know, a better chance to get to like Netflix or Hulu or something if I went with a bigger distributor. But distributor that maybe I haven't worked with, I, to me, it's just it, like it's not worth it. You know, and I know that's easy for me to say having worked with different distributors and having choices. But, it, you know, I'm I'm telling you, and if people, if you, if you trust what I'm saying, like, you know, like indie rights out there, they they are trustworthy. They'll get you on platforms. You'll get paid, you know. And they're they're one. They're good, you know. And and there are others, but like they're they're the ones I would say that because I've had the most experience with. 